Getting corner pins right can be a lengthy but rewarding process. In this video we will be continuing on from the previous corner pinning basics tutorial and look at how we can create corner pin filters for the different surfaces you are projecting onto. Recall in the basics video that we only needed to create one filter since the projector was facing directly at the house and its perspective was a singular surface. Projecting from an angle similar to this though will require us to create a few different filters for each section of the home. Here we are on the fusion page, and there is already a fusion tree set up, featuring a limb for each masked section of the map file. There are three distinct sections we will need to create a corner pin filter for. Just like we did in the corner pinning basics tutorial, let's enable the limb. Reduce the alpha of the background node. And then add a grid node in front of it. Change the coloring as you see fit for better visibility. Then, select the grid node, and open the search menu with Ctrl plus C on your keyboard. Search for the corner positioner node, and then add it. For the rest of this video, I'll be referring to this node as a corner pin node. Stretch the corners of the corner pin node, and line up the grid lines, with the lines of your map file. Notice that while I'm stretching this, I'm attempting to maintain the aspect ratio of my project as best I can. I'm allowing the corners to go way outside the boundary of the map. I could use a cropping node to reduce the aspect ratio of the corner pin and then just pin the matching corners up. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way, and it should work. The reason I don't do it that way is simply because it adds another node that I have to balance settings for. If I have to make an adjustment to the corner positioner node again, then I'll likely have to modify the associated cropping node as well. Remember that our masking nodes will take care of what is allowed to appear in that section. Since I don't need the cropping node for that either, I simply limit my perspective tuning to one node instead of two. When you think you're getting close to having your filter correct, add any piece of media to the limb by creating a branch for it. Add a merge node between your grid and corner positioner. Then connect your media to the merge. Let's add a transform node as well between the media and merge nodes, so we can modify the size and placement. Using the inspector, we can make this asset smaller using the size slider, then change its position by modifying the X and Y values for the center property. If your media looks overly squished, or just generally off from what you think it should look like at that angle, trust your gut and make adjustments to your corner positioner node. Remember that you will still want the grid lines to match your map lines after adjustments. Just make small changes to the positioner to balance out how you believe it should look, and keeping the grid lines intact. To get this right, you're going to make a lot more adjustments to it, so don't fret too much about absolute perfection at this point. You're just trying to get to a good enough start for now. For the next limb, the process is exactly the same. Except you'll notice this time, the corner pin is being lined up almost opposite to what was done on the previous limb. Since this space is so skinny compared to the others, Let's add more lines to the grid using the inspector. This will make it a bit easier to line up this section. As you're making adjustments to your corner pins, don't make the mistake of matching up lines from one grid with another. It's not important at this moment in time. If you're worried that this will have an impact for assets you want to display across all three surfaces at the same time, I promise you we will cover stitching them together in the next video. For now, stay focused on getting the filters correct for their associated tree limb. If you're having trouble with the colors you pick to modify the filters, don't be afraid to change them to something better. Especially if it's clashing with the media you've chosen to test with. Again, add and transform any media to fit within that space. Here I'm just going to use the same piece of media across all three so I can compare them with each other. Perform those steps again for any remaining surfaces you will be projecting onto. You might wonder why I'm not using the same node from the first limb on this third limb. While they are going to generally be the same shape since they are going the same direction, the distances between their surfaces and the projector placement cause enough differences, to the point where it's probably best to give each its own filter. If you wanted to try and use one filter to cover both sections, you could certainly give it a go, since it might work okay for you. Once you have all of your initial filters in place, it will be time to test them while projected onto the home, and make your final tunings while it's up on the house. In the previous video in this series we covered live testing on the home. Be sure to go back and watch that video if you need to, in order to make your final adjustments. If you want some validation that your work has been worth the time, you can compare how things look on your home with, 
and without the filters. Simply select your corner pin filter, and then disable it in the inspector menu. Doing this can give you a good understanding of how well your filter is working, and how skewed your projector perspective actually is. This will give you an actual real-time look at how necessary these filters are for your eventual display. You can test further, by trying out different media assets in combination with the filter. The perspective on it should already be correct when plugged into the branch. In this example, all that was needed was a resizing to cover the entire area. You might want to do a few more tests to ensure your filters are working as intended. Once you're confident you've got it right, you can move on to backing up your filters so that you can recover them in case you accidentally delete them. First, rename each corner pin node by right-clicking on them and choosing Rename from the menu. Name them in a manner that associates them with the limb they are filtering. Then, copy them somewhere else in the nodes pane as a backup. I like to place my copies down here in the lower right-hand side near the beginning of the tree. Finally, we can back them up to a third location by copying all three nodes, then opening any simple text editor and pasting into there. You will see a bunch of nonsensical gibberish pasted into it, and that's exactly what you want to see. Save this text file somewhere you will remember. Now if you ever have a catastrophic event and you lost these nodes, you can easily get them back by copying from the text file and pasting them back into the Fusion Nodes pane. You can do that for any Fusion nodes you wish to keep for the long term. While Resolve has many different ways to save Fusion nodes or effects, I like this for its simplicity. We now have a set of filters that cover each section of the home that will apply the proper perspectives to any media plugged into each one. The only thing left to do is to create a mechanism that will stitch them together, so our assets can move across the entire home if we desire, and maintain the proper size and perspective. That is exactly what we will be covering in the next video. Until then, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future tips and tricks on home projection shows using DaVinci Resolve.